our summer solstice marks the beginning of Neptet season and was celebrated with a lotus ceremony. Neptet is the sister of Oset, and together these goddesses resurrect Asa in the story of creation, the resurrection story that inspired the tale of Christ's death and resurrection. The majority of the stories in the Bible, edited and polluted as they were, are based on cosmic events that they had learned from African societies, African philosophy, and African spirituality. And we based all of our natural sciences, or we based all of our spirituality on the science of nature, the science of the cosmos. So that's why the story of resurrection is based on a cosmic event. And the lotus flower was celebrated and honored in this time because the lotus flower itself represents resurrection. The lotus is a symbol of the singular source of creation. It emerges from muddy, murky waters, independently gracious. The summer solstice in our hemisphere is not the same way that they celebrate the summer solstice in the northern hemisphere because when we have our summer solstice they have their winter solstice so right now they're doing let it snow let it snow christmas carols and we we're in tkz hello december the sun is out we're doing the most we're drinking we're brining we're swimming like we're at the beach we're doing the most like we're celebrating the heat because this is when we're at the peak of summer I know I've spoken in previous videos about the star Sirius in the east, the brightest star in the night sky. So the way that it works is that on December 24th, it aligns with Orion's belt. These three bright stars in Orion's belt were sometimes referred to in ancient Kemet as the three wise men or the three kings. So the three kings, the three bright stars and Sirius all point to the point of sunrise on december 25th and this is why the kings follow the star in the east in order to locate the sunrise this is why we call it the birth of the sun it's the birth of the sun sun so this is the story from which the christ era was born on this day one of the most important things about the sunrise is that it occurs within the constellation of Virgo. The constellation Virgo was originally referred to as the Virgin. Virgo in Latin means virgin. It's also interesting to me that Bethlehem in Hebrew translates to house of bread. The Virgin constellation is always depicted holding a sheath of wheat. Analyzing cosmology and the constellations always reminds me of how, you know, every story that I was taught as a child generally just comes from the stars so that's basically it i think that's why i think that's why lion king was always my favorite movie as a child because i was always so fascinated by all the things Mufasa would say about how the great kings of the past look down at us from the stars and how they guide us from the stars december 25th is a very specific cosmic event that our ancestors observed as the birth of the sun and they taught us the principles and the importance of that cosmic event through the tale of the birth of the sun heru this is the origin of christmas what we celebrate during this time is actually the rising of the sun in the constellation of virgo aligned with sirius and the three kings in the sky more importantly in this time we're celebrating the beginning of summer marked by the solstice which occurs on the 21st of december and this is the longest day of the year this is when the sun is at its zenith its highest point in the sky giving us maximum sunlight maximum life so if you think about the yin yang spiritual dynamic the winter solstice is the yin the dark the feminine and the summer solstice is the yang it's the light the masculine <laughs>
this sun is meant to be good for your mood for productivity because the additional sunlight is meant to help you regulate your internal clock it's supposed to improve our eyes light receptors making it easier to recognize when it's time to wake up and fall asleep despite your spiritual practices or spiritual beliefs the summer solstice is meant to give you an opportunity to embrace culmination achievement and victory this is the climax of a cycle of growth it's a time for standing within the light, sharing what we have with the world and honoring who and what we are. So just as is symbolized by nature, this time of harvest should also see us traveling a journey from darkness to light. This is when our ancestors celebrated the return of light, life, fertility, and potential for a good harvest. And even today, we still celebrate it. We still carry that energy of celebration during the summer solstice. We're always swimming, braying, dancing. We may not do bonfires in the traditional sense now, but when we carry the essence of the celebrations that we held originally, we've just changed them, I guess. The nature of them has changed, but the essence has remained the same. This is such a beautiful celebration that honors our ancestors. My name is Lucia Mutong. I'm from a company called Look More Wines. So we produce the wines that are on your tables. What we have done is we have named our wines after African kings and after African kings. So you will see that this wine is named after King Makosonke II, who is the king of Amandabele. And then this other wine is named after Queen Sukhuta di Mabena, who is the queen of Amandabele as well. So what we do through these wines, we tell the African story and then we go back to history as to how we as Africans used to live. spirit of keeping this as brief as possible, ways to celebrate the summer solstice, right? Ways to honor the summer solstice, ways to align with the summer solstice this year and all the years to come. If you're not hosting a big lotus ceremony, this is the way to do it at home, by yourself or with your friends and your family. The most fundamental thing is get outside, absorb the sunlight, absorb the life that comes from sunlight. Also stay up all night, sharing the good vibes, observing the sunset and sunrise from the solstice. Spend time with nature, the natural elements, earth, fire magic. Fire magic is so important in this time. So set your intentions with a fire ritual. Some cultures would light bonfires and dance all night until the flames reduced to embers. Then they would jump over the burning coals to make their wishes for the months ahead. We still do it, I know, as Izangoma. I don't know if it happens in every Mbande, but there are certain rituals that we do where we light the fires, we do our dances around the fires, and then we do whatever we're doing with the fire and we jump over it kind of to seal the deal. If lighting a fire is a bit extravagant <laughs> or extra for your situation, you could always do a more toned down version of it by lighting a candle or multiple candles if you can. These are the, the candles that you use to set your intention you know how you do it and how uh, personal it is to you obviously it's different for everybody I don't like to uh, subscribe a certain way to do it um, I have given certain ways of doing it and in, in previous videos you can check those out I know the winter solstice video I spoke about um, candle a little bit of uh, candle magic when it comes to setting your intentions but I'm usually very vague about it because I like to get into the details of those like one-on-one -on -one in readings depending on your energy and your ancestors and how they want you to work with your candles so we do that in our initiations and consultations things like that but otherwise you know I'm hoping that everybody kind of has an idea of how they resonate with candle work and candle magic you can also ground yourself with yoga yoga slash meditation um, I know yoga and meditation are not necessarily the same thing because yoga 
can also be quite painful but it stretches various areas of your body it increases the blood flow and it improves blood flow in your body i highly recommend it always it is also a very strong way to invoke meditation because of how much it centers you the lotus pose is just a great flower inspired pose for balancing the root chakra because it allows for the base of the spine to root into the earth there's also solstice sex for those of you who know a thing or two about sex magic i know some people find it quite taboo but it is a really great way to manifest obviously it has to be 100 percent consensual and also 100 percent intentional like it can't just be with anybody for whatever reason you need to have the intention behind it for it to work there's also crystal magic this is a great time to cleanse and charge your crystals and then there's my personal favorite ritual bath i love to steam i love to bath in these times in salts and herbs and whatever juju you love to put in your tub to cleanse your aura to recharge your spirit the color of the season is blue the crystal for the season is alabaster and this goddess energy resides within the willow tree so if you know of a willow tree nearby place an offering underneath it obviously a biodegradable offering please our spirit guides often love offerings of wine beer grain salt bread herbs flowers water the most important thing in this season is to let loose let go be yourself share your heart your soul share your experience of this gregorian year with those around you those that you love those that you trust express and also listen just remember that you have a lot to offer and a lot to learn and this is the time to receive life this is the time to be joyful even if you have to create that joy for yourself i really hope and pray for you that you have a beautiful festive season the most important thing is for you to be joyful in this time it's a time to be merry don't be caught up in the colonial way of celebrating in the colonial way of doing things know that this is ours this is our time this is our celebration period and aligning with that doesn't mean changing our behavior it just means adding on to the spiritual significance of what we celebrate and what we love about this time so that it's relevant to us and so that it aligns with nature and what it is that we're celebrating in this time i love you guys i miss you guys those who follow me on social media i'm slowly getting back into the social media live like i'm starting to do some lives again those who already follow me on instagram Instagram, know that I get on there and I talk for hours and hours lots of love from me and the whole Afro Savvy family we wish you all the best take care of yourselves don't drink too much take a lot of activated charcoal for those of you who are going to be drinking but just celebrate and give love and receive love and do the most lots of love take care